What is going on, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, cats and dogs, you are listening to another episode of Rebellion Wrestling Radio, our second episode in two days here, and uh, it is your boy Ryan, aka Mr. Showtime, I'm going to give my views of the 2017 Royal Rumble, it is in the books, it is in the history of the uh, you know the WWE of professional wrestling and more. I want to talk about um, the highs and the lows and all the matches that, that occurred on the main card and on the pre-show. Uh, before we do that, I do want to thank you all for uh, checking us out every single week right here on the Stolen Show Network. We are live right now on Spreaker.com. If you want to join the conversation, go to Spreaker.com slash show slash Rebellion Wrestling. All right. Uh, also, all of our past episodes, you can check us out on RebellionWrestling.com. We're on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter at RWR underscore wrestling. Uh, pretty much anywhere you want to find your favorite pro wrestling podcast, we're going to be there. So, um, you know, definitely uh, search us out. Say hello to us, you know. Um, and if you want to support the show, go to uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Rebellion Wrestling. Uh, we got four designs up right now uh, for this show and the Hardcore Geek Podcast, our sister show right here on the Stolen Show Network. Uh, you know, get yourself a cool t-shirt. Get your friend a t-shirt, friend, family member, especially if you're a fan of the show, fan of professional wrestling in general. Uh, check those out. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Rebellion Wrestling and, uh, you know, help us keep the lights on over here at Rebellion Wrestling. All right? Um couple other plugs I want to get out of the way. We are going to be live uh, at Mega Championship Wrestling's Mo Money Mo Problems event uh, in a beautiful Elyria, Ohio. Uh, it's near the, near the Cleveland area, Cleveland-ish area if you can. Uh, if you're going to be in the area, check it out. It's going to be Saturday, March 25th. Uh, go to MegaChampionshipWrestling.com to get your tickets, get information of the bell time, the the, the time that the doors are going to open. You don't want to miss this one. Um, we have links on our website, RebellionWrestling.com. So many different ways you can get your tickets for Mega Championship Wrestling. So after all that is in there, let's talk about the Royal Rumble, okay? So we um we had our Royal Rumble party yesterday we had uh joe dub there uh michelle was there um you know every, every everybody watched the royal rumble yesterday my wife came down and watched the royal rumble uh thanks to everybody at showed up thanks to everybody who uh, participated in the um in the royal rumble games um man it, it was it blew my mind especially the results and the, uh, the the rumble itself. Now, I'm gonna start with the pre-show. The pre-show I actually had to go back and watch because we were doing our uh, our rumble pre-show during the WWE pre-show. That just happened to be how it fell. Um, especially with with WWE doing like these like the, the two hour pre shows like I understand it for WrestleMania. I mean WrestleMania is WrestleMania and I see that they're doing this with all th- um it, it's kinda just like a weird a weird thing, you know? Uh if it was filled with matches that's one thing, but two hours that's almost like a whole pay per view right there, you know? Um so the the very first match kinda missed a little bit of it. We had like we we're kinda getting the show or the party going. And that was the uh, the opening match between um, Nikki Bella uh, and uh, Becky Lynch and Naomi taking on Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and um, and Natty. Um, I am I'm not a fan of Natty. I don't I know a lot of uh, the inside a lot of the crew here were, were not a fan of man, of, of Natty. It's not that we don't like her. I it's just it's she's really bland. I don't want to hear about her cat anymore. It's just, it's just, she's annoying. She's annoying to, to fans. I don't know. And then, you know, I don't want to piss off any, any, you know, Natty Nightheart fans out there, but this is just how it is, you know? Um, 
I, I'm really happy to see Mickey James back. I like the pairing with her and Alexa Bliss. And you had like some nice little storylines going on here. You had uh, Becky Lynch still kind of feuding with uh, with uh, Alexa Bliss. Looks like that's going to be leaning more towards to a Mickey James feud. You had the whole thing with Natty and Nikki Bella. And then the, the the thing I really like is that it looks like we're going to be getting a new challenger. At least that's kind of like WWE, um, you know, booking and, and uh, just going by what we've seen in the past. It kind of looks like uh, Naomi's going to be able to uh, get a shot at that uh, WWE Women's SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, she she is the one who kind of got in Alexa Bliss's face on SmackDown, and she pinned her after an awesome split leg and moon salt uh, right here at the Royal Rumble. So she pinned her clean. Um, I gotta say one thing about Naomi. She is crazy athletic. She's been with the WWE. I want to say. At least, I mean, you know, when the Funkadactyls came out. So I think, wait, what, like 2011 ish, 2010? And, uh, I mean, she's she's put on her dues, you know? She's 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 uh, got a cool look. And I I don't know, in my opinion, I think she'd make a great women's champion. Uh, at least a at least, uh, really formidable challenger for Alexa Bliss. Now, Alexa Bliss, on the flip side, is a really great heel champion. And uh, a lot of girls, you know, maybe the, it's kind of like me, you know, I, I like the, uh, I like the heels, you know, I like the bad guys, you know, maybe some of the, you know, the, the you know, the, your younger uh, female fans, uh, maybe they're, you know, maybe they uh, relate more to a, an Alexa Bliss than a Nikki Bella or uh, more towards a, a Mickey James than a Naomi. I don't know, but really happy to see Naomi get the pin uh, and, and, you know, it, great, you know, I, I give it two thumbs up. Okay, nice quick match too. It wasn't wasn't too drawn out. Uh, everybody kind of got their spots in, so that was really really nice. Um, now this is the the match we completely missed. I had to go back and watch the uh, the club. We have Gallows and Anderson taking on uh, Sheamus and Cesaro for the Raw Tag Team Titles, and I'm gonna say it, and I'm just I know it may not be a popular thing, but I really really do not like. Uh, the Raw Tag Team title belts. Uh, it's kind of just one of those weird things with me, like three things that are kind of weird with me, right? Ring attire, entrance music, and uh, and championship belts, okay? That's just my thing, okay? Uh, I don't know why they had to change them to red and silver. It's just, you know, who knows? Give it, you know, a few months out, I'll probably get used to it, and then I'll probably never bitch about it again. But for now, I really don't like the belts. The uh, The whole premise of this match is that uh, Gals and Anderson got the pinfall, I believe, on, on Cesaro uh, about a week or two ago on Raw. Um, this came after Sheamus accidentally punched out a referee. So the second referee came down uh, after they hit the Magic Killer on Cesaro. They got the 1-2-3, so it looked like we had new Raw Tag Team Champions. Second referee came, comes in and says, no, that's not the case. Uh, Gallows and Anderson do win. However, they win by disqualification. So your classic dusty finish. And uh, I think a lot of people are really behind the club. I know me, myself, I love the club. I love the Bull Club. And, uh, you know, big fan of, uh, of Luke Gallows. I loved him when he was Festus. I loved him in a straight society. And he did a great job when he was in Aces and Eights. If anybody watched TNA, uh, skyrocketed when he was in New Japan. Uh, I, I didn't know too much about Carl Anderson, but I learned a lot, you know, reading PWI, YouTube, whatnot. And then now that they're together in the WWE, I've been behind these guys since day one. I was really upset when they were kind of, I want to say maybe they were being used really stupidly. If that's, if that's even a word. Um, they were just, they weren't being used right. When they were doing the Dr. Gallows and Dr. Anderson thing, when they were feuding with the New Day, when they were just basically just almost like a comedy tag team. Uh, I just really think that was just really dumb. And then from there, you know, they were dropping to Enzo and Cass. And, and I mean, everybody. It just it, it became like a running joke. Like, they're never going to get an honest push. So to see them being used, you know, a little bit better and being, uh, you know, used in a serious matter going against Cesaro and Sheamus, I, I really enjoyed that. So the way this match turned out, uh, we did get another ref bump. Sheamus uh, doing a bro kick going for, I believe it was Gallows. Uh, Gallows moves out of the way. Uh, the referee, referee number one, the the in-the-ring referee, as opposed to the enforcer referee on the outside of the ring, uh, took a nasty bro kick. I don't know if he was injured from that. It just looked really bad. 
Um, from there, there were some other shenanigans, like no no cheating or anything like that. Uh, but uh, Gallows and Anderson did get the pinfall on Cesaro, and we have new uh, Raw Tag Team Champions. So it's going to be interesting to see if this reign lasts. Uh, I know we're going to probably be getting a return bout. Could be as early as tonight on Monday Night Raw. Could be, uh, I believe, uh, the next Raw pay-per-view is Fastlane. I believe that's the first weekend in March, so that could be the case too. But, uh, you know, kind of nice to see these guys. You know, they've been at the WWE since the day after WrestleMania last year. And uh, it's nice to see them finally get their due and uh, and get their hands on those Raw Tag Team titles. So, moving on. This is the third and final bout of the pre-show. Uh, we had the boss herself. We had Sasha Banks taking on Nia Jax. Now, the backstory of this match is basically uh, Nia Jax attacking uh, Sasha Banks, kind of laying her out. Uh, she had, like, a leg injury, a knee injury, or whatnot. Uh, there was some vintages shown where Sasha was trading in the ring, and Nia Jax just comes out of nowhere, which, in my opinion, was really stupid, because, like, how do you not see Nia Jax getting into the ring? Like, it, it's... Dude, you gotta watch the video. It's, it's Sasha Banks kind of just doing random bumps before the opening of Raw, and, you know, some of the refs were out there, you know, and the trainers were checking on her leg or whatever, and they didn't even warn Sasha that Nia Jax was coming until she was actually in the ring, so I, I just really thought that was some really dumb booking or dumb storyline right there, or whoever wrote that segment, they should have used a little bit more logic, and I always say, you know, Logic sometimes doesn't have it have a place in professional wrestling, but uh, maybe I maybe I need to change my change my tone with that because something like that you, you have to use a little bit of logic. Uh, nonetheless, uh, they've been kind of going back and forth. Uh, Nia Jax came out, uh, destroyed Ray Lynn on Monday night. Uh, if anybody's not familiar with Ray Lynn, she's an excellent independent wrestler. Uh, wrestles a lot uh, in the uh, the uh, northeastern. Uh, or, or the, you know, the Midwest. We'll just say the Midwest. Uh, she's she's great, though. And, uh, you know, she got squashed, unfortunately, by Nia on Monday. Uh, this brought out um, Sasha Banks after Nia Jax, you know, cut a, you know, a nice heel promo. Uh, now, this match at the Rumble, it was, uh, I don't want to say Sasha got squashed. But, you know, she was defeated, uh, you know, quite easily, you know. As far as, you know, we, I'm, you're used to seeing, like, Sasha and Charlotte go back and forth, and Sasha and Bailey, and the excellent message, or, excuse me, matches from NXT. Uh, this was, uh, you know, a pretty easy win, I want to say, for, for Nia, but on the flip side, it wasn't a squash match for Nia. You know, she had to work a little harder than, than, than you've seen her on recent Monday nights, you know, from NXT to uh, Monday Night Raw, you know, she's pretty much come in there and she's been like the Braun Strowman of the women's division or the, you know, the Goldberg of the women's division, you know, just squashing people in a few minutes or less than a minute, you know. Uh, but, you know, this was uh, pretty cool. Uh, the, the, the spot I really enjoyed was the stretch muffler from Nia to Sasha. You know, she really kind of really kind of took, took her knee apart, took her leg apart. So it wasn't like... Um, you know, they still try to make Sasha look strong in defeat. I think they did a good job with that because I think, uh, you know, Nia is definitely someone you're, you're going to build up going forward. So, yeah, there's that. All right, so that's your whole pre-show there. Uh, pretty decent. You know, we got a nice promo from Shawn Michaels hyping up the crowd. And, um, you know, <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta have Shawn Michaels, especially if you're in San Antonio. Um, he's talking about, you know, being in the ring 20 years ago, talking about, you know, just, you know, this, you know, all the little bullet points that WWE likes to talk about when it comes to the Royal Rumble, the road to WrestleMania, and all this other bullshit, right? Um, the pay-per-view kicks off with the Women's Championship, or excuse me, the Raw Women's Championship. You have the champion Charlotte taking on Bayley. Now, this is an excellent match. Now, Bayley looks really good in this match, you know, looked a little bit more vicious than she normally looks, okay? Uh, Charlotte still got the upper hand. Charlotte does get the win over Bailey. Uh, I, in in my opinion, and this is just because maybe I'm so used to, 
you know, used to the Charlotte and Sasha matches. This one was a little underwhelming, but again, on that flip side of the coin, this is probably one of Bailey's best matches since coming up to the main roster. Uh, they haven't really done too much with Bailey. You know, they've had her viewed with, I believe, Dana Brooke, who's been almost, you know, completely absent from the WWE other than like the main event show. Uh, and I really think that's it. You know, she, I think she had a couple, maybe a match or two with Sasha. I don't know. Uh, that's really it. So, and this was definitely um, Bailey's best match on the on the main roster. And I really think this feud isn't over. I think this is going to be leading into Fastlane, and then the uh, the blow off of the feud will be in. Uh, you know, will be uh, in Orlando at WrestleMania. Now, the other cool thing too is that we have the storyline with Charlotte, where her pay per view win streak is completely intact. She's still undefeated on pay per views. Which is, uh, you know, something to be, uh, something that, you know, not to bat an eye at. You know, you got to be proud of that. And that's something that I'm sure WWE is really going to run with going forward, especially with Charlotte. You know, you have that. And then you have her being the daughter of, you know, pretty much the greatest wrestler of all time, uh, quote unquote, you know, Nature Boy Ric Flair. So, really cool there. So, we're going to go through the other matches here. Now, I'm kind of just kind of going back and forth here. Give me one second here. This is me being completely unprepared for this ma- for this podcast here. Uh, we have the Universal Championship. We have Kevin Owens defending the WWE Raw Universal Ch- you know Raw Universal Title, right? I guess that's what they're calling it um, against Roman Reigns. We have Chris Jericho, the reigning U.S. Champion. He's suspended above the ring in a shark cage. Okay, now this is kind of. Going back to the day uh, when they would put like uh, I think they had like Jim Cornette up there. They had Paul Ellel- uh, Paul Elling in there. Um, uh, you know, back uh, a couple NXT Takeover events ago. I believe that was the one from Toronto. So this is basically to prevent any kind of interference from Chris Jericho. We were going to go to see that that isn't the case. Uh, another stipulation that was added to this is that it was going to be a no disqualification match. Now, this match, I'm not really the biggest Roman Reigns fan. I'm a little bit more towards KO. Uh, of course, Chris Jericho. I love, gotta love Chris Jericho. But uh, this match was really good. You know, it, with this one, with the the guys, you know, the, they've done this match before with Owens and Reigns, okay? Now, that being said, you know, we, we've seen it, I believe. Uh, I believe we saw it at Roadblock. We've seen this match on Raw countless times. So, you know, what is WWE going to do from there? Uh, the the no disqualification stipulation kind of gives them a little bit of wiggle room, gives them a little bit more creativity, and we definitely saw that in this match. Uh, one of the favorite spots is Kevin Owens building almost like a pyramid out of chairs. Uh, nice to see that they didn't really kind of go to that right away. They didn't they didn't you know quote unquote blow their load on that one. Um, real cool table spots from Reigns and from uh, and from Owens. Uh, we saw. Uh, just, you know, brutal, brutal, uh, you know, back and forth, I, almost like, you know, almost strong style, you know, uh, we, we, then we got, uh, Chris Jericho with one of my favorite moves of the night, throwing, uh, brass knuckles down from the shark cage down into the ring, and, uh, it looked like, like, Roman was gonna get the, uh, get the, uh, brass knuckles off of Kevin Owens, and that wasn't the case there, we saw just a kick-ass, uh, Superman punch with the brass knuckles, from Kevin Owens to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, of course, being the new Superman of WWE, kicks out of that. Um, that one was um, just really kind of dumb. I think was, uh, from the top rope, um, he's on the top rope. He got Superman punched. And he fell just a nasty, nasty spot there uh, going through these chairs. Uh, but Braun Strowman uh, hit that running power slam on Roman Reigns, uh, through a corner, uh, uh, table kind of propped into the ring corner there, uh, really nasty spot, allowed Kevin Owens to get the, the cover, the count, and the victory, still your WWE Universal Champion, Kevin Owens, uh, really, really excited about that, okay, so, uh, there's that, Let's go and move on to the next match here. Now, now let me tell you about this. I, I, I don't want to say that I'm shitting on Roman Reigns because I'm going to get to another Roman Reigns point a little later. I just think that they're not using him right. I think that I still, to this day, I think Roman Reigns needs to be a heel. And that's just that's just 
my opinion, okay? That's just, you know, maybe some people don't want him at all in the WWE. Maybe some people, some people you know, love him as, like, the, the babyface white, you know, the, you know, white bread good guy. But I think Roman Reigns would work best as a heel, uh, as a dominant heel, and a heel that's that's backed by the company. Now, I don't want to kind of, you know, bring back the authority storyline or the corporation, but, you know, you you just have it as Roman Reigns, you know? Hey, I'm the guy in the commercials, I'm the guy in the video games, I'm the guy, you know, doing the, you know, the interviews on, you know, Sports Center and all that. You know, that's that whole thing where he can go back to saying, I'm the guy. But you kind of flip that and you turn it into an arrogant heel. That's how I would accept Roman Reigns as a top star, you know, perhaps as a universal champion. But Roman Reigns as this good guy, I, I, I think that time has passed. I think you got to flip the script a little bit, all right? So let's go to our next match right here, okay? Next match is for the uh, WWE Cruiserweight Championship. We have, uh, we have Neville, the king of the cruiserweights, uh, heel Neville, loving heel Neville, uh, challenging Rich Swan. Now, this, uh, this match came about when Neville made his return, and he just kind of basically, uh, or his, his debut on 205 Live. And, uh, actually, no, I thought, I think it was at a random pay-per-view, actually. I think it might have been at Roadblock. But, um, he just completely turns heel, and, uh, the, the Neville that we've been getting since his heel turn is the Neville that we need. Now, it's just to the point where his promos are awesome, his uh, him saying that he was should have been in the cruiserweight tournament, he should have been in the UK tournament. I love the bitter, angry Adrian Neville or Neville, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and then that's a perfect contrast to Rich Swan, who's your happy-go-lucky uh, face champion. Uh, both guys excellent in the ring, and then you also had the the built-in storyline of uh, Neville training Rich Swan. So that that's a really cool thing too. So leading into this match, um, we had you know a lot of appearances on 205 Live. We had some really good build-up with Neville getting a lot of wins. I don't think he's lost since coming back, to be honest with you. So uh, this is one, me personally, I was looking forward to. Uh, the match itself was a little slower paced than you would think, especially with these two guys here. Um, and that's due to Neville's heel style. You know, he's doing a lot of, you know, a lot of rest holds, a lot of, you know, not wasting energy and not, you know, doing too many high risk moves. I believe the only time Neville really took a, took a, a chance on the top rope. He got jacked in the face by a spin kick or a super kick. Um, Neville did kick out of Rich Swan's uh, spin kick finisher. Uh, I don't know the name of that. I don't know if it actually has been named, but he did kick out of that. Eventually, he did get uh, Rich Swan in the Rings of Saturn finisher, one of my favorite submission moves. And uh, Rich Swan did have to tap out. So we have your new cruiserweight champion of the world, the king of the cruiserweights, Neville. So, um, that was awesome, I, in my opinion. I don't know if any of you guys take the time to watch 205 Live. If you don't, totally do it. You know, it's right after SmackDown. It's about 45 minutes or so. Uh, about maybe like two or three matches. Uh, and, uh, you know, that that is the thing. I will say this. I was at Raw Monday night, and it was a little cheap for me. I always thought that they changed the ropes. I guess it's purple duct tape. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was kind of... Kind of goofy, in my opinion. You know, didn't think that would be the case. All right, so we got to go through our other matches here. So let me know what you guys think of the um, of the uh, the cruiserweights here. Now a lot of it's been kind of a a mixed reaction. You know, uh, I've watched on on television, you know, two hundred five live, and I've watched uh, on Monday Night Raw, right? And it really seemed like they really didn't get a lot of reaction. And that was actually the case when I went to Monday Night Raw uh, this past week. Uh, and it, it's kind of a shame because it's just these guys work their tails off, and they, I, in my opinion, I think they deserve a little bit better. That's just my opinion. So I don't know. Um, from here, we go to the WWE Championship match. Uh, so from SmackDown side, we have John Cena. Uh, one of his uh, first matches back from his return, he had a nice win over uh, nice win over. Um, uh, Baron Corbin uh, about a week or two ago uh, going against the reigning and defending phenomenal AJ Styles 
Uh, now, this was a good, really good match because John Cena hasn't beaten AJ Styles yet. And they really played off on that. Uh, they played off on, on how John Cena's been taking time off, whether it be for injury, whether it be for filming television shows or movies. Uh, kind of flipping the script, kind of like when John Cena was calling The Rock out uh, about four years ago. And now it's AJ calling John Cena out. So you kind, you kind of have the opportunity to get behind either man. Uh, obviously, AJ Styles has been the heel lately, and uh, John Cena is, uh, you know, your he's kind of like your Roman Reigns. But I think he, little little by little, he's uh, earning the respect of a lot of those John Cena haters, myself one of them. But no matter what, I'm always going to be an AJ Styles guy. This match, okay, I'm not going to be able to call every spot, so I'm just going to really kind of go through it really quickly. This match right here is potentially... Uh, WWE on, on WWE side, uh, a contender for match of the year. Now this is to the point where, you know, they're they're kicking out of each other's finishers. Uh, there was a really nasty Styles clash that uh, that AJ hit on John, where I believe it was the first Styles clash in, in the match, where um, he uh, John's face just hits the mat first. You know, I always get real nervous when John Cena takes the the Styles clash because it's been said before. That John Cena is a little sloppy, or not not a little sloppy, but he's a little clumsy sometimes. And he's just a big, burly dude. And AJ's, you know, a little bit smaller than him. And you always get worried that he's going to not maybe not put his head up and maybe accidentally tuck his head. And that's like my biggest fear of John Cena taking that style of clash. You never want to see anybody get hurt. Um, so that that was uh, that was one thing that, that totally happened there. Um, so... These guys are kicking out of each other's finishers. There's here's the one thing I really thought we were going to get a little bit of interference from the club because it was a dual, a dual pay per view. I thought we may see Gallows and Anderson come out, um, do a little bit of interference, but that wasn't the case. This was a legit one on one match. Uh, these guys were, you know, just uh, they were just kicking the shit out of each other. We'll just say that. And um, from from here, like we saw. Uh, John Cena hitting new moves, hitting like this crazy, um, like fireman's carry into a cutter. I think I've seen it on like Monday Night Raw, or not on Monday Night Raw, but the uh, the the 2K video game. Uh, we saw a top rope uh, attitude adjustment from John Cena to AJ Styles, which AJ kicked out of. Uh, we saw you know just AJ trying you know kind of pulling out all the stops, you know springboard for 450, phenomenal forearm. Uh, great uh, ring uh, uh, mat work with uh, kind of reversing each other's submission holds into the other submission holds. So that was really cool too. So um, the finish came from uh, AJ Styles kicking out of the top rope AA. John Cena had to hit two more attitude adjustments. Uh, the way he did it too is really cool. He hits one attitude adjustment, uh, rolls uh, AJ Styles into his shoulders, picks him up from the ground, Hits one more attitude adjustment, and uh, John Cena makes history at the 2017 Royal Rumble, becomes a 16-time WWE Champion, uh, WWE World Champion, whatever you want to call it. Uh, ties the uh, the infamous Ric Flair number, uh, which, in, if I'm not mistaken, I believe if you count the other world titles Rick has won, I believe it's around 18 or 19. But WWE really likes to stick to 16. Uh, the thing that was a little bit of a shocker to me is that they didn't really play up the 16-time champion thing too much. You know, I think they mentioned it once or twice, but I really thought that for something like this, something this monumental, especially with a guy like John Cena, they would have done a little bit more. They would have possibly, you know, had Ric Flair appear on SmackDown, maybe leading up to the Royal Rumble. Or maybe uh, if John Cena were to not win at the Royal Rumble, you know, maybe he would be entering into the Elimination Chamber match. You know, we don't know, but regardless, this was one hell of a match. John Cena put on a great performance. AJ Styles put on a great performance. I'm really interested to see what happens on SmackDown, uh, considering uh, what happened in our main event. Our main event, of course, being the the match itself. 30 men enter, one man comes out, gets a world championship match at WrestleMania. This is the Royal Rumble itself. I kind of want to go through everybody who was in here. I wonder if I could find the order of eliminations. I don't think I have that, but um, we had 
I'm going to kind of announce. I don't know if I can really do this. Let's just do some highlights, okay? So number one, we had uh, we had Big Cass coming out. They did a really long intro with him and Enzo. I kind of zoned out from there at that point. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Enzo Amore and Big Cass, but it really kind of seemed, uh, you know, a little, you know, a little, a little weird there. Um, so from there, we got our number two entrant. We got Chris Jericho coming in. Okay. And, um, I, I, you gotta love Chris Jericho. Okay. He is, not only is he the U.S. champion, but he's hilarious. He's, this is probably one of the best, uh, you know, the best runs he's had as far as character. I love the, he's, he's kind of almost like a, uh, What's what's the word I'm looking for? Just almost like a pussy, you know. <laughs> he just doesn't. He doesn't. Um. He he's you know always scared to come in, you know, and you know especially in this match, you know. Uh, he he pulled the old uh, Jerry Lawler move where he was uh, on the outside, and uh, you, you kind of forget. You're like, okay, is Chris Jericho still in the match? You know what's happening with that, and um, you know we we kind of seen him peek in here and there, and then he would roll back under the ropes. Okay. Uh, our number three entrant was Kalisto from SmackDown. Uh, seeing him go against Big Cass was uh, was something there, you know, something that uh, you know, it's it's nice, you know, a little contrast. I don't think we've seen that match before. Uh, we may have seen the Lucha Dragons and Enzo and Cass in NXT. I'm not sure, but you know, we'll go from there. Uh, number four, your entrant was Mojo Rawley. The uh, he's going on a singles run now, especially with Zack Ryder being uh, being on that injured list. Speaking of Zack Ryder, who knows? Maybe we'll see Emelina come back soon. We'll find out. But uh, Mojo Rawley comes in number four. Uh, number five, your entrant was uh, from the cruiserweight division, Jack Gallagher. Uh, love this guy. Now, the funny thing is, I'm watching this with my wife. He doesn't really watch it too much. And everybody in the room knows who Jack Gallagher is. My wife's like, what the hell is that guy? And I had to explain her, you know, Winston, the uh, uh, the um, uh, the umbrella and his whole gimmick, and how he's a gentleman and this and that, and, or an extraordinary gentleman, excuse me. Uh, that that was a, a nice little, he, he was kind of like the comic relief, I want to say, uh, next to James Ellsworth. Uh, just because, like, you knew he wasn't going to win, but it was always entertaining to watch him interact with the main roster. And that's something that WWE has really been dropping the ball with, with the Cruiserweight division, is they don't have them interact with the main roster. If they do, it's very limited. And I think that's uh, that's just a shame. They, they really got to, you know, get, get these guys, uh, you know, give them another chance to uh, to interact with the main roster. That, that's all I'm saying. Uh, number six, uh, I guess you could say a surprise entry, but uh, being in Texas, I figured this would happen. We had the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Okay, and I, th- I believe these are in order here. These have to be in order. I believe they're in order. Uh, from there, we had Braun Strowman from Monday Night Raw. I, for some reason, I really think Braun came in early, but I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. Uh, Braun was uh, one of my favorites to win, especially the way they've been building him up. He's been just destroying everybody here. Uh, we had uh, Sami Zayn coming in eight. They they kind of spoiled that in a, in a backstage segment with Dean Ambrose, which was actually pretty comical. Uh, Big Show came in number nine, and uh, him uh, kind of getting in the face of uh, Braun Strowman was really interesting. Uh, Touch Strowman, that was really cool. Number ten, uh, number ten is one that we uh, we really wanted to to, uh, to to happen as far as who was coming out. Number ten, WWE did deliver. We have NXT's Ty Dillinger, the perfect ten. The crowd went nuts. Everybody in our party went absolutely bonkers when Ty Dillinger came out. Uh, he had a nice little showing, you know, kind of getting in Braun Strowman's face and uh, teaming up with Sami Zayn. That was really cool there. Uh, from there, we had SmackDown's James Ellsworth. Uh, James Ellsworth was uh, coming down with Carmella. Uh, funny thing is her pants, she had like his little, um, his face all over her pants, which is actually kind of funny. Basically, his uh, his uh, crappy t-shirt that he has out. And um, he was in uh, in and out pretty quickly. He, he actually waited until the next entrant came out, and that was Dean Ambrose. 
Uh, they kind of did the okay, let let's you know on three we're gonna go in and we're gonna take out Braun Strowman, and, and uh, on three Ellsworth runs in, Ambrose stays on the outside, let's uh, let's uh, Ellsworth gets you know get destroyed there. Um, Ellsworth did throw or did get thrown out from uh, Strowman. Really, really uh, scary looking bump. The way he landed from being thrown over the top right on his shoulder. Now, there hasn't been any reports that have come out that he was injured, but uh, if you guys got to go back and watch that, just that elimination right there might actually be on YouTube, so you might not have to really fast-forward through the Rumble, but James Ellsworth elimination um, looked pretty nasty there. Uh, from, uh, from Dean entering in, we got the number 13 entrant, and that was Baron Corbin. Uh, Baron Corbin, who's been kind of, you know, really been built up a little bit. I think some of his steam got got uh got you know let out with the loss to John Cena. But he's been almost like a a frequent uh guest on the Talking Smack show. So his character is uh, been really developing really well. And of course in ring too. The more he's in the ring, uh the more, you know the better he's going to get. And I I'm a big fan of Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin actually eliminates Braun Strowman. Something I did not think was going to be the case. I really thought Braun was going to be at least like in the final four. So that was a huge surprise. It kind of came out of nowhere. I I kind of looked away from the TV for like a split second and then at the very end I saw Strowman going over and it was it was Corbin that threw him out so I thought that was that was nuts uh we have uh number 14 we have Kofi Kingston entering the Rumble uh he did have a little bit of a a cool little move where I believe it may have been Corbin going after him I believe and uh he was on the um uh, might have been Corbin or might have been Cesaro I can't remember uh, or Sheamus, uh, but he was standing on the, you know, the big LED ring post, and he kind of jumped off and uh, looked like he was going to get eliminated, and he kind of spider man his way up, uh, kind of botched a little bit, hit his chest, it really looked nasty, but that was the Kofi, King- Kofi Kingston spot for this year's Royal Rumble. Uh, after Kofi Kingston uh, comes in, uh, The Miz comes in, followed by Sheamus, Big E, Rusev, who was wearing a face mask, uh, I believe his nose was broken on Monday night. Uh, I believe it was a kick from Kofi Kingston during the tag match. A lot of people didn't see this. They kind of cut away, but uh, there were the trainers on the ringside uh, section. And Lana was really checking on Rusev. There's a lot of blood. And uh, so it turns out he did have a broken nose. So he was wearing the uh, the old face, you know, the almost like the Cody Rhodes face mask. Uh, funny thing is that that same night he was talking about being handsome Rusev. So maybe they'll maybe they'll do like a uh, a d- un- undashing Rusev gimmick. Who knows? After Rusev, we got Cesaro, Xavier Woods from Raw, and then we got Bray Wyatt and Apollo Cruz. Uh, that, that's going to be uh, the twenty first and twenty second entrance. Um, from here we had uh, Randy Orton that came in. And Dolph Ziggler, who came in and just was super kicking everybody, uh, kind of a, in my opinion, I don't know what they're doing with Dolph. I know that it's this whole heel thing, but it, it's, I don't know. It was just really weird, just him coming in and just super kicking everybody. I don't know. Uh, we have Luke Harper. So, uh, cool thing with Luke Harper is he got immediately in the face of Randy Orton. Bray Wyatt tried to get in between them and try to, like, calm everybody down. Luke Harper immediately clotheslines uh, close uh, Bray Wyatt, and Randy Orton uh, is just sitting off to the side. Harper looks like he's going to give Bray Wyatt the sister Abigail, where Randy Orton, uh, out of nowhere, hits a RKO onto Luke Harper. So looks like the Wyatts, uh, at least as far as Luke Harper, looks like he's on the outs there. Uh, and uh, we, it remains to be seen what's going on with Orton and Bray. Uh, interesting note, Randy Orton did come into the ring without the uh, the modified uh, Wyatt family entrance. He used his uh, his Rev Theory theme, his normal his normal theme. So that was a uh, you know just a maybe a hint of things to come. Uh, number twenty six, we had Brock Lesnar coming in. And Brock, let's see, Brock was just kicking the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Brock was 
F5 and everybody, Suplex and everybody. Uh, I don't know who if he had three eliminations. Uh, kind of another comedy spot. We had Enzo come out at number 27. And uh, it was basically, uh, he got in the ring, got clothesline almost out of his shoes, and thrown over the top. So that was, that was uh, in my opinion, a wasted spot. I think it could have gone to somebody else. Somebody like Samoa Joe or anybody from NXT or anybody from the from the UK tournament. Um, and then we had number 28, we had Goldberg that came in. Uh, Goldberg was uh, super dominant. Spears Brock Lesnar right away. Throws him over with no no hesitation. That was another shocker. Brock Lesnar is just his... Goldberg's got his number, apparently. I believe that's just the story that, that the WWE is playing right now. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens from there. Uh, right after that, The Undertaker comes into the ring. Now the lights go out, and The Undertaker is in the ring. Really cool uh, cool entrance. I think this had to do a lot, a uh, lot to do with the uh, the entrance ramp being super long. Now you find pictures online that they actually, for a lot of the bigger guys, they had the old, not like the old ring carts, but they actually had like a little cart taking them to the ring. Guys like Biggie, guys like uh, like Big Show and whatnot. So that's uh, something that I learned this morning when I woke up. Uh, Undertaker. Uh, got in Goldberg's face, had a chance to, you know, he eliminated a few people. Goldberg spears uh, The Undertaker, uh, but then Goldberg uh, is immediately eliminated by The Undertaker, who does his sit-up, throws him over the top. Uh, number 30, so this is the thing. Undertaker was 29. You're thinking number 30. Who's number 30, right? Is it going to be Samoa Joe? Is it going to be, I was thinking it was going to be Finn Balor coming out. Number 30 is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, who was who lost his, his match with Kevin Owens earlier in the night. Uh, it's really dumb, because it's like, okay, well, if Roman got in, why didn't AJ get in the Royal Rumble? I, I think that was really stupid booking by the WWE. Uh, I, I understand why they did it, especially with the finish. Roman Reigns uh, was... A, he, uh, the, can't believe this, I don't want to say it, but Roman Reigns eliminates The Undertaker from the Royal Rumble. The crowd is absolutely booing the living shit out of Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns is eliminate, eliminating everybody. I believe the final three were Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and Roman Reigns. So the entire Alamo Dome is losing their minds, booing, because we're like, we're thinking we're going to get a repeat of the 2016 Royal Rumble, the thing, or 2015 Royal Rumble, the thing we didn't want to see. We don't want to see Roman win, uh, especially when Roman eliminates Bray Wyatt. Roman uh, knocks Randy down, looks like he's going to go for that spear. As he's leaping forward for the spear, Randy catches him with an RKO, one of the Best RKO's I've seen in a long time. Staggers Roman Reigns. Randy Orton clotheslines Reigns over the top. Your winner of the 2017 Royal Rumble, the Viper, the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. This I can say, I did not see coming one single bit. Now, I've gone online since then, especially right after, just to just to browse and see how people were, were talking and what people thought of the results. A lot of people hated it, and, and for, for you know certain reasons, right? People were upset, you know, oh, we didn't get Kenny Omega. Okay, well, Kenny Omega said he wasn't going to be in the Royal Rumble. He came out flat out said, I'm staying with New Japan, so I knew that it wasn't happening. People were upset because Finn Balor wasn't in there, and I, I want to all minute, yeah. I, I get it. Finn Balor wasn't in there. I was a little upset myself. People were upset. We didn't get enough surprises. I don't know who people wanted in the Rumble. Uh, I mean, WWE pretty much has everybody you can think of, unless they're talking about people from uh, NXT. The, the one name that I was surprised wasn't in there was Tyler Bate, who they did do a video of him arriving in San Antonio. He was at NXT TakeOver in the crowd. And they didn't use him. So, I don't know. Maybe they, they did some tapings with him uh, for NXT next week. They usually do that uh, before the uh, before the uh, NXT event. Uh, but that was interesting that he wasn't in there. But I'm going to be very honest. I, I really do enjoy the fact that Randy Orton won. Because I didn't 
I didn't see it coming. So people are going to complain one way or another. They're going to complain because, you know, a guy like Randy Orton wins, right? But then if somebody like, let's say, let's say Undertaker won, right? You know, then we're going to get Taker and Cena, right? Uh, then the, the people on the internet are going to complain that, well, WWE is too predictable. So I think in, in reality, you're really not going to, really not going to please everybody. You're never going to please everybody, especially wrestling fans. And speaking, you know, I am a wrestling fan. I understand. I bitch about it. You know, it, I'm one of them. But, you know, take the Royal Rumble and look at it as a whole, okay? We, we had excellent matches from top to bottom. We had the excellent match between John Cena and AJ Styles. Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens pulled off a great brawl, a great spot fest, if you will. Uh, we have a new Cruiserweight champion in Neville, which uh, I think that, that's definitely something that's deserved. We had a really good match between Charlotte and Bailey, And the three matches that, that started the pre-show were really solid as well. Um, the cool thing about this is that we don't know what's going to happen, okay? We saw a stare down between Roman and, and Undertaker after the, after the elimination. Are we going to get Roman and Taker at Mania? Who knows? Uh, we saw Braun Strowman get involved with Roman Reigns. Are we going to get Braun and, and, and Roman Reigns? Who knows? Who's going to be the next challenger for Kevin Owens? It really hasn't been said. Uh, is is Randy Orton going to go against John Cena? Or are we going to get a new champion? Or are we going to get some twists and turns going into the to the Elimination Chamber in two weeks? Remember, we got a pay-per-view in two weeks, guys. And then also, you know, what's going to happen with Goldberg and Brock Lesnar? Are we going to get that blow-off match? Or are we going to get Taker and Goldberg? Who knows? That's the beauty of professional wrestling. That's the beauty of this time of year. That's why we love the Royal Rumble. That's why we love this quote-unquote road to WrestleMania because it's the blow-off. It's the culmination of all the storylines and all the uh, you know all the, the twists and turns, and, and it's all gonna blow off at WrestleMania. And then for WrestleMania, we hit the reset button, you know. So I'm I enjoy the Royal Rumble. I don't think it was the best Royal Rumble. I don't think it's gonna be a super memorable Royal Rumble, but it was a great start to the WWE pay-per-views for this year. Um, I'm going to be uh, checking out Raw tonight in about a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Uh, be sure to tune in this week. We're going to be doing a special uh, episode covering the XFL. We have Super Bowl Sunday coming up, and uh, Chase and I believe we're going to be talking the uh, the XFL and all its glory, uh, quote unquote, and uh, you know just see uh, if we have some fond memories and find out what went wrong. This is going to come right after the. Um, the XFL special that's going to be airing on ESPN and the 30 for 30. I believe it's Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. So uh, that's going to be uh, something I'm going to be tuning in myself, maybe taking some notes for the show. But yeah, but um, for everybody here at Rebellion Wrestling, everybody here at the Stolen Show Network, I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for all your subscriptions, your downloads. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate it. For all past episodes, you can check us out at rebellionwrestling.com. You're on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter at RWR underscore wrestling. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and check out prowrestlingtees.com. Uh, we have a ton of uh, cool designs. Well, not a ton. We have four designs. Uh, but go to prowrestlingtees.com slash rebellionwrestling. Get yourself a kick-ass t-shirt. For myself, for everybody here, I want to say thank you again. We'll catch you in a few days for another episode of Rebellion Wrestling Radio. Have a good night, everybody.